Hi, welcome to Life's Connections. I'm Mark. Our goal here is to use scripture to answer your questions. Well, we might make some people mad with today's topic. It's become a very touchy topic in our culture. We want to look today at what the Bible says about homosexuality. And obviously there are parades for certain rights and advocates for certain rights. And well, we don't need to get into all the details of the political issue of homosexuality. Again, you know, I don't really want to wander into the political arena and I don't want to give you a whole lot of what Mark thinks about something. I just want to look at a few verses, let the Bible speak for itself, give you maybe a little commentary on the verses, but let's just look at what the scripture says about the subject of homosexuality. And we'll start again with our anchor verses, as I've said, for this four-part series on marriage and sex. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, <clears throat> verses 2 and 3, we read, but because of immorality, each man is to have his own wife, and each woman is to have her own husband. The husband must fulfill his duty to his wife, and likewise also the wife to her husband. We can see in this verse, it says each man is to have his own wife. It doesn't say a man should have another man. Each woman is to have her own husband. It doesn't say a woman should have another her woman. So we can infer from this verse that when Paul was writing 1 Corinthians, he was writing about God's plan being a man for a woman, a woman for a man. Now let's look at some commands that God gave. We're going to look at both the Old Testament and the New Testament. We're going to start in the book of Leviticus. That's way back there, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. So you're early on in your Bible. If you're flipping there with us, chapter 20 and verse 13. And that verse reads, if there is a man who lies with a male, as those who lie with a woman, both of them have committed a detestable act, they shall surely be put to death. Their blood guiltiness is upon them. Now that verse, it would seem that the teaching is very clear there, that the man is not to have relations with another man the way he has relations with a woman. Some will say that this is only for Old Testament times, only for the nation of Israel, and it is true that that command was given specifically to the nation of Israel. So let's flip ahead now to the New Testament and see some verses where the New Testament addresses this. We're going to go to the book of Romans, chapter 1 in Romans, and verses 26 and 27. There's my bookmark. Took me a little while to get there. <clears throat> and here we read, For this reason God gave them over to degrading passions, degrading passions, for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural, and in the same way also the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another, men with men, committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. I don't think too much commentary is necessary here. It makes it clear that God considered those acts to be degrading unnatural, perverse, indecent, and it even says receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. What is this due penalty? Well, I'm not going to tell you that I know for sure, but I will say that we know both in the homosexual and heterosexual community that when there is sexual impropriety with numerous partners, there tend to be a lot of diseases, a lot of things that go along which could be interpreted as receiving in somebody's own person the due penalty. But I can't take that verse and tell you with 100% certainty what that says, if it says that absolutely. What I can tell you is that we see here clearly God saying that these acts are degrading and indecent. Clearly, God does not like them. God does not approve of them. And I just want to go back to one more verse, and it's one of the verses that we looked at when we spoke about the subject of divorce in part one of this four-part series. And it's Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4, and it kind of reemphasizes what I read in the Corinthians passage. 
In Matthew 19, verse 4, Jesus is speaking. And he answered and said, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? Someone once said that when God created, he created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And we may get a little chuckle out of the play on words there, but it's true. God created, initially in the Garden of Eden, one man and one woman for that man. God's original intention was a man with a woman. God did not intend a man with a man and a woman with a woman. He never laid that out as an option or a possibility through the history of Scripture. He makes it clear, I believe, through these teachings. And I know there are Christians today who won't take a stand for this belief, but what does the Scripture say? We don't want to deal with what Mark has to say. We want to look at what the Scripture says. And I think in these four passages that we've looked at, we've seen very clearly what the Scripture has to say. Now I'm going to repeat something that I've mentioned in each of the last two episodes. Homosexuality is not the unforgivable sin. Maybe you're listening and you're somebody who's been touched by this sin in your life or with somebody close to you. Jesus died for all the sins of the world. This is not the unforgivable sin. It is sin. I believe the scripture says that very clearly, but it is not unforgivable. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to look in your scriptures. And Lord, make us willing to stand for truths even when they're hard and unpopular. This may not be a popular opinion in our culture today, but your word says that homosexuality is wrong. Lord, if there's someone listening who's been touched and trapped by that sin, I ask that your spirit would move in that person's heart, that that person would be able to recognize and receive the forgiveness of Jesus Christ and not continue to be trapped in that lifestyle, in that sin. We thank you for the forgiveness available in Jesus Christ. In his precious name, amen. Homosexuality is wrong. The Bible teaches it but the Bible teaches that Jesus' forgiveness is available because of his shed blood on the cross. We're so thankful for that. If you have comments or questions, and I know you may, please feel free to insert them below. And if you enjoy hearing us every week, please click like and please consider subscribing so you won't miss an episode. We post our episodes every Thursday at 9 o'clock, and we're going to wrap up this four-part series next week, next Thursday at 9 o'clock. We're going to look at what the scripture says about polygamy. There's an issue we don't see as much today, but nevertheless, it's an issue I think we should address. So I hope you'll join us next time. Thanks for joining us this time. And until next time, keep walking on the well-lit path.